What's up guys, in this video we'll be building on what we've learned about MobileNet and the techniques we've used for fine tuning to fine tune MobileNet on a custom image dataset that does not have classes similar to the ImageNet classes it was originally trained on. So let's get to it. We saw in the last video how well our fine-tuned mobile net model performed on classifying images of cats and dogs. We noted, however, that many types of cat and dog breeds were included in the image net dataset that mobile net was originally trained on. So we didn't have to do much tuning for our model to perform well on classifying these images. Now we're going to see what we need to do to fine-tune mobile net on a completely new type of dataset, which doesn't contain classes similar to those included in image net. This dataset is images of sign language digits. There are 10 classes labeled as 0 through 9, and each class is made up of images of hands showing the sign for that particular digit. This dataset is available as grayscale images on Kaggle and is also available as RGB images on GitHub. I've included the link to both resources in the description. We'll be using the RGB dataset. All right, let's get right into the code. Please, please go on, Mr. Buchanan, go on. Before we can begin tuning the model, we first need to organize our images on disk, and they'll be organized in the same fashion as the cat and dog dataset we used in previous videos. I went ahead and included the terminal commands and a small bash script in this notebook, which creates the directories for the train, validation, and test sets, organizes the images into their respective classes of 0 through 9 on disk, and then shovels the dataset and splits the images into either the train, validation, or test sets. So that's all here for you if you want to make use of it, and you can modify it to be general to apply to all of the datasets that you use in the future. Now after our image data is all organized on disk, we need to create the directory iterators for the train, validation, and test sets in the exact same way as we did for cats and dogs. And you can see that this is literally the exact same code. The only difference is the location that the path variables are pointing to. Next, we import MobileNet and print a summary of the original model. In the same way we did before, we're building the new model that contains all of MobileNet up to its sixth to last layer. But this time, the output layer that we add contains 10 output nodes that correspond to each of the sign language digit classes. And after building the model with Keras functional API, we then print out the summary. So up to this point, things are very similar to the cat and dog model. Now, the main change we're introducing is how many layers we're going to train on the new dataset. So we still want to keep a lot of what the original MobileNet has already learned from ImageNet by freezing the weights in the majority of layers. But we do need to train more layers than we did on the cat and dog images, since there is relatively more to learn about this new dataset because the classes aren't similar to those included in ImageNet. So I did a little testing and found that training the last 23 layers will give us a pretty decently performing model. Recall for the cat and dog model, we only trained the last five. Now 23, is this the optimal number of layers to train? I don't know. Play around with this some yourself and let me know in the comments if you can get better results by training more or less layers than the results we'll see in a few minutes. Now, if we look at the summary of the model, I've scrolled to show the first layer that will be trained, the 23rd to last layer, which is this convolutional layer. So this layer and all the layers after this one will be trained when we fit the model on the new dataset. All layers above will not be trained, so their original image net weights will stay in place. All right, so now we compile the model in the same way as we did with the cat and dog model, and when we call fit generator, the only difference is that our steps per epoch change due to the size of the dataset, and our validation steps change for similar reasons, and we're training for double the amount of epochs with 60 rather than the 30 we specified for the cat and dog model. Since there's more to learn about this dataset, it needs to be trained longer than the previous model. Now I've scrolled down to the output from the last few epochs, and the results are pretty good. The accuracy on the training set has reached 100%. Our validation accuracy is lagging some, only at 83%, so we have a little overfitting going on here, but let's roll with this model the way it is and see how it performs by giving us predictions on the test set. Again, please feel free to train for longer or adjust any hyperparameters to see if you can get better results than this. And if you do, share your experience in the comments. I'd really love to hear about your approaches. All right, so on to the predictions. 
We set up our test labels in the same way as before by grabbing the classes from our unshuffled test set. And we use model.predict generator to run the predictions. Only this time, steps is equal to five rather than one since we have a larger test set. We then make our confusion matrix object using scikit-learn's confusion matrix that we imported at the top of our notebook. And now we're just printing the class indices from our test batches so that we can see the order of the classes and specify them in the same order when we create the labels for our confusion matrix. So after creating those labels, we then plot our confusion matrix and let's check out the results. All right, so at a first glance, looking pretty good. Just checking out the diagonal here that contains all the correctly predicted samples, we can get an idea that the model did pretty well. Each class had five samples, and we see a decent amount of fives here and some fours as well. The model incorrectly predicted a four, four times on images that were not fours, and incorrectly predicted a five, one time on an image of a three. So five incorrect predictions out of 50 total gives us an accuracy of 90% on the test set. Not bad. As mentioned earlier, there are still improvements that could be made to this model. So if you implement any and get better than 90% accuracy on the test set, I wanna hear about it. So all this talk about mobile nets over the last few videos, are we going to make use of them after this? Well, yep. Remember back in the Flask videos when I mentioned a new series on TensorFlow.js would be coming soon? What about it, old sport? We'll be making use of mobile nets there. So now that you're equipped to work with them, get ready to see some action with them using TensorFlow.js. And I'll see you in the next video.